This tutorial is an adaptation of the Princess Dragon tutorial in Alice 2. It's meant to be a beginner's introduction to Alice 3. We'll do some scene setup, write some simple methods, and create some events. Let's get started. Once you open up Alice 3, the first thing you want to do is choose the grass world. Once you've clicked the grass layout, you can press OK. Every time you open up a new world, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and save that world. So you go to File, and then Save As. I'm going to call my world Princess Dragon, and go ahead and save it. So once you've saved your world, you can go ahead and click on the left-hand part of the screen. It's called Setup Scene. And once you click Setup Scene, your screen should look like this. And so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and put a camera here. So that way if we move the camera away, we have a way to come back to the original view. So if you click the yellow triangle by camera markers, you should be able to see this down here. And then we should be able to do add camera marker. And then you can rename camera marker one. I'm going to call it original view. And once you've renamed it, you can go ahead and click OK and it should come up right here. So once you have your camera view set up, you can go ahead and start adding in objects. And so for this story, we're going to need the Alice object. So if you go to the tabs down here, and if you go to Browse Gallery by Group, you should see a Characters folder. If you click on the Characters folder, it should open up. And then the first character in there is Alice. So I'm going to use Alice. You can drag it in, and you get to choose which Alice you want. I'm going to choose Alice in Wonderland, and then I'm just going to go ahead and press OK, and she should appear. And if you need to move Alice around, just make sure she's in the left-hand corner, sort of towards the front. If you just click on her, you should be able to move her around. And so just go ahead and place her in this area. Next, we want to add in a dragon to our world, so I'll show you another way to add in an object. If you click the Search Gallery tab, you can type in what you're looking for to see if it has it. So I'm going to type in Dragon, and I'm going to have a dragon come up, and you can pick which color you want. I'm going to choose the red dragon, and I'm going to drag it in. And click OK. And once you have your dragon in the world, try to place it in the right sort of behind Alice, sort of over here. If you don't get it exactly in the same place mine is, it's not a big deal. Once you have your objects positioned, we want to go ahead and move the camera. And we want to still be able to see the dragon, but we want Alice to be out of the view. So I'm going to use the arrow keys down here, the middle one, and I'm just going to go ahead and click to the right. And you'll notice this red thing is right here. Like when you drop a camera, it's actually in your world. And so when you play your world, you won't be able to see it. But if you're doing scene setup and stuff, you'll be able to see the camera. So if you move forward a little bit, it should go away. I'm also going to move my camera just a little bit up so we can see all of the dragon. Once you like where your camera is positioned, go ahead and add another camera marker. And I'm going to call this camera marker Night View. So now we want to go ahead and add in a horse and a knight. So I'm going to search for a horse in the search gallery tab. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drag one in. And click OK. And then we want some kind of knight character. So the way I'm going to find this character is go to the browse gallery by class hierarchy. And then I'm going to go to the biped class. And so if you choose one of these options, new elder, adult, teen, child, you can, if you click on them, you can see you can customize them and put them in whatever clothing you want. So you could make a knight yourself here, or I'm just going to go ahead and look for an already made character, and I'm going to choose Thor and go ahead and drag him into my world, and he's going to be my knight. So once you have your character in your world, I think my Thor is a little bit too big, so I'm going to click the resize button over here, 
and then I'm gonna make him a little bit smaller. We want to put Thor on top of the horse so it looks like he's riding horse. So the first thing I want to do is go back to the default and then if you look at the yellow ring that's around this object that actually lets you rotate the object. So I'm going to put the horse sort of facing the dragon and then I'm going to try to get Thor on top of the horse. So I'm going to move Thor first and then I'm going to rotate him around so he's facing the right direction. And if you ever make a mistake, you can always click undo. So once you have him sort of like this, I'm going to go ahead and click translation, and then I'm going to move him up so he's on top of the horse. It would be pretty difficult to get him to sit on the horse because we would have to move subparts, his joints, and get him to sit properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and have him stand on the horse. Once you've gotten all your characters where you like them in this view, you want to go ahead and click the drop down menu where it says this and go to this dot camera. And you want to go to one shots, procedures, and you want to do move and orient too. Because we want to go back to our original position. So you're going to go to this dot camera, one shots, procedure, move and orient to, and go ahead and click your original view and it should you bring you back and once you're there you're done with part one and you're ready to start coding in part two